the Skiffle style. And Lennon, faithful to his Liverpool roots, got a kick out of American rockers. When we got here, all, you were all walking around in Bermuda shorts with Boston crew cuts and, and uh, you know, stuff on your teeth. And now they're telling us that they're all saying, well, our beat was a passe and this is like that. I mean, there was no conception of dress or any of that jazz, you know. And we thought how hip we were, you know. But you tend to get nationalistic. We were, we used to really laugh at America, you know, except for its music. And it was the black music we dug. You know, and over here, even the blacks were laughing at people like um, Chuck Berry and, and the, the blues singers. The blacks thought it was, wasn't sharp to dig the really funky black music. And the whites only listened to Jan and Dean and all that. Anything the least bit bluesy and black sounding also got to John and Elvis Aaron Presley. The Benville Hillbilly Cat had been howling away down south in just that fashion. The regional popularity Elvis enjoyed in the early 50s was nothing compared to Colonel Tom Parker's visions. The managing colonel had just ended a 10-year stint handling Tennessee plowboy Eddie Arnold and was ready to go out scouting the south for a shining star. Not the kind that would make him a general, but the kind that would make him a legend. Parker found Elvis, who'd already scored in a minor way with his early recordings on the Sun label. The Memphis-based company that was the springboard for the growing rhythm and blues-based sound. Signing artists like Jerry Lee Lewis, Charlie Rich, Johnny Cash, Roy Orbison, who were all to influence John Lennon's music in a big way, as well as future partner George Harrison. For me, the thing that really was like a message from outer space or from the gods was when I was riding down the street on my bike and I heard Heartbreak Hotel playing on somebody's gramophone. And that was the first thing that really uh, had that excitement. Well, 